All right, check it out. Today we're looking at the EVGA GTX 285, but it's not the regular version. It's the super clocked. Bam! They put a sticker on the box and that changes everything because uh, you get faster frequencies, which in turn means you're obviously going to get better performance. Um, they pretty much overclock the core and the memory on these cards. They don't really overclock the shaders very much, uh, but this is a bad card right here, okay? If you guys are running a nice uh, high-end gaming system right now, whether it be a Core 2 Duo or Core 2 Quad based system, and you have uh, NVIDIA graphics, this is the card that you probably uh, want or you want to get a second of because two of these is even better than one, as you could probably imagine. Uh, these cards scale incredibly with the latest drivers from NVIDIA in SLI uh, and in 3 SLI as well. Plus, if you have a really special board out there and you have four PCI Express slots, you can do the dedicated physics plus three-way SLI, which is very nice. So uh, let's talk a little bit about the specs of this board. Now, this is just the same thing. The GT200 uh, GP, you can't really see it, but obviously it's going to be right there um, is where it's located. Uh, it's basically the same thing as the GTX 280. Of course, it is 55 Nm, though, so it does overclock better. It has higher frequencies, and I'll tell you what, you guys think that is not really a big deal over the GTX 280. Uh, it definitely is. It's got some insane performance. Let's talk a little bit about some of the specs. Now, first of all, uh, the GPU on here uh, regularly is at 648 megahertz on a regular reference card. This is 675 uh, megahertz. Now, ALUs or shaders are also, uh, again, like I said earlier, not really overclocked. So you're regularly at 1476. These remain at the same. If you want to overclock it yourself, Feel free, you can. I'm not sure if it's concluded in the box with all these discs, uh, but I bet you anything that if you look in this driver disc, there may be the uh, over EVGA overclocking precision, precision overclocking tool. Uh, if not, you can download it off their website. Very, very simple to overclock your graphics cards. If you want to go above 1476, you can. Uh, the memory is usually at 2484. This is at 2538, so it's faster as well. Uh, it's still on that 512 megabyte memory bus. Um, so the memory interface is very wide. Um, it's 448 bits on the GTX 260s and 275s and stuff like that. So this is the full 512 bit interface, which is really nice to have. Now, um, let's talk about some of the other stuff. First of all, uh, some of the requirements you're going to need on this card, if, especially if you're going to run more than one. Um, it is a two by six pin card for power, so you're going to need about 550 watts. Okay, that's what they recommend. Um, if you want to do more than that, well, you're going to need about 750 to 800 watts, and you're going to need uh, quite a bit of amperage on your 12 volt rail, so make sure you have enough PSU. Also, when you run double and triple SLI, what happens with this is that if you have an older, really nice power supply, it had those eight pins and sometimes they weren't the modular eight pins, and then now that they switch back to double six pins uh, because power is, consumption has increased and or improved uh, because of the die shrink going to 55 Nm, you run out of plugs. So in the box, of course, as usual, you do have a Molex to six pin, and you have two of those in case you want to do SLI or you need the second one. Uh, I don't recommend you use these long term though. They're not really the best. Um, so make sure your power supply is going to handle these cards. 505 watts, about 40 amps on the 12 volt rail, 750 watts and about 65 amps if you wanted two of them. Um, you're going to find different recommendations on the web. Depending on the quality of your power supply, it's going to determine 500 watts is not enough on a no name brand, uh, but it could be enough on a Corsair or PC power and cooling. Uh, another thing you'll notice about this card is it's got a big bright red side there. So it's probably going to look pretty good in your case. Um, I would imagine an SLI, it's going to give you a little bit of color added to your case. Um, Besides that, uh, it looks like a reference card. They all have the same graphic on it from EVJ. It looks like a piston of some sort. Oh, there's still a sticker there. Sorry about that. Uh, let's talk about everything else. PCI Express 2.0 uh, is what you're going to be using on this card. So it will be compatible with X16, regular older PCI Express, no problem. Um, dual, dual link DVI eyes. It's a mouthful right there. So these are dual link DVIs and they're the I version, which does analog and digital. They'll do 2560 by 1600 at 60 Hertz on two monitors, or they'll do 2048 by 1536 at 85 Hertz on dual monitors. And if you want to do a single monitor up to 240 Hertz at 2560 by 1600. Uh, so in the event that those uh, 240 Hertz TVs come out down the road, uh, you'll be able to use them on there on a big, big, big TV. Uh, obviously you got the uh, little audio loop right there and the cable is provided in the box. If you don't know what that's for, it is very important and very useful. Uh, that's what gets you the audio out your HDMI. So if you use uh, the HDMI DVI dongle that's also provided in uh, the box, you're going to get seven channels of audio. You're actually going to get eight channels of audio, 7.1 through this HDMI cable as long as you have that little tiny audio loop cable uh, plugged in. Without it, you are not going to get it. Uh, another thing to take note in this card is it is exactly 10 and a half inches long. Um, you're pretty standard 
large video card size. So uh, there's small video cards and there's large ones and these are the big ones and these are 10.5. So make sure you have enough space uh, inside of your case. Now, besides that, everything else here as far as options go is the stuff that you're used to seeing. Pure HD video with HDCP support and HDMI support means that you can stream Blu-rays and HD DVDs out the, out the uh, DVI to the converter through your HDMI to your TV. Uh, you have SLI, of course, those connectors are uh, right up here. You also have physics capabilities, um, CUDA, Ready, OpenGL um, 3.1. You also have um, DirectX 10, obviously. And what are we missing? That's about it. That's a lot of good stuff. Also, again, like I mentioned earlier, EVGA overclocking tool, very simple to use. Lots of uh, great abilities there to monitor fan speeds uh, and change them manually, which is helpful if you're going to overclock, set them to 60. It's going to be a little loud, but you will get some frequency out of it. So uh, very, very good cards. Uh, now, if you have any questions on these, feel free to email me uh, right here. And uh, that's it for this time. See you later, guys. For more information on the EVGA GTX 285 super clocked video card, type in E145-283 into the search engine of any of these major retailers. For Computer TV, I'm Albert.